Hi, this is JB from Not the Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another Arkham Horror LCG campaign playthrough. And this time we are running through the, uh, the Feast of Hemlock Vale campaign with Wilson Richards. Uh, I will go through my decklist in a bit, but before we go there, just um, I won't be reading um, all of the story text in, in the campaign guide because there's a lot of a lot to read in between the scenarios with the co codex entries so i will be reading the codex entries and uh, i will limit uh, reading the act and agenda cards at the start of the scenario but uh, that is it i will go through uh, most of the resolution texts so if you haven't played hemlock vale there will be some spoilers throughout this campaign playthrough. Uh, but uh, first off, we did a de decision at the start of the first prelude. So in this campaign we have preludes which set up the day scenarios and then we have uh, the scenarios after that. So these videos I will be filming the prelude and after that I will go on to the actual scenario so be have that in mind that these videos will be quite a bit longer than uh, usual uh, complaints i do uh, so just a forewarning about the length of the videos so uh, we did a decision so we had a choice that we say to mother rachel uh, that we are on a scientific survey or that we are on uh, here for the feast and well i think wilson is here for the feast so we ended up adding a elder thing token to the chaos bag for the remainder of the campaign and uh, yeah that is basically everything i want to say before we start uh, going through my decklist for this campaign uh, this will be a uh, an uh, untested idea I had for a Wilson Richards um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre themed <coughs> uh, chainsaw deck <coughs> because Wilson can play um, tools assets uh, cheaper so uh, the chainsaw is a tool asset so why not so let's hop over to arkhamcdb.com and look at the deck list first Okay, and we are over on arkhamcdp.com, and here is my Hemlock Chainsaw Massacre uh, Wilson Richards True Solo deck. So, uh, because this is a True Solo deck, I added some tools that help me investigate. So we have uh, two copies of Lock Picks Level Zero, two copies of Old Keyring Level Zero. Mm. Then, uh, because we don't have enough experience to get the chainsaw at the start in any way. So we have a, a card that will be substituted for the chainsaw later. We have the sledgehammer level zero. Uh, this is, um, the cleaning kit is basically in the deck just uh, uh, for the chainsaw. So we are not using that uh, that much at the start of the campaign. Uh, we'll probably commit it to a test or something like that. Uh, fine clothes because uh, there are a lot of parlay tests in this campaign so why not uh, then uh, more investigative help uh, we have a couple of mat match boxes of course one wolf mask because the masks are awesome and uh, then we have a bunch of events oh yeah uh, just to say the Venturer is also in the deck just because it can put supplies onto the chainsaw. So um, we are not basically using the Venturer in, for anything else. And uh, I think this is actually my deck that I haven't upgraded yet. So yeah, uh, I forgot to save it, but whatever. Um, basically, I have added in the thick of it, so I have three experience to start the campaign with. Mm, I will have two copies of deduction in the deck, uh, one copy of deduction in the deck because uh, I will add versatile with the experience. So versatile will increase my deck size by five. I can have one more um, card from out of my 
available cards, so it is deduction. Then I will I added two copies of um, vicious blow and two emergency caches level zero. So yeah, sorry about that. I forgot to upgrade uh, upgrade this with uh, in the thick of it, but yeah. Yeah, either way, uh, these cards here are what I'm uh, going to aim to upgrade my deck with, but I'll, I won't go into detail with that. I will put a link to my actual deck list in the video description if you want to check that out. Uh, then uh, we have Jury Rigs because they help me either investigate or fight better. Uh, prepare for the worst to search for my hammer at the start and change all later. Push to the limit. This will help me if I discard a lockpick, I can use that. And later on in the campaign, when I replace my chainsaw with a new one, the old one goes into the discard. I can uh, play, use the chainsaw from my discard, put it back into my deck and get it later again. So it helped me keep the chainsaw chain going on. Then uh, scene of the crime, of course, some um, auto clue tech for uh, Guardian. Uh, Tinker, this is just because the chainsaw takes up two hands so, and the hammer, so we will try to get uh, a Tinker on it so we can uh, play um, other one-handed tool assets out. And winging it, well, just it's just a good card for true solo. And uh, yeah, uh, for skills I have two overpowers and two perceptions, just so I have better chances at investigating and fighting. So that is basically the deck. Um, I'm hoping it, it works. I'm a bit worried that there's only two weapons, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, let's hop back over to the scenario. Okay, so uh, we are ready to begin. So I have the preload set up here. We have the veil over here. Everything is revealed and uh, we start at the crossroads and we'll go from there. And for one player game, there will be one doom on the agenda at the start. Per setup, we don't have an encounter deck, so we are not revealing any to um, cards at the mythos phase uh, for the prelude. Uh, we can't take damage or horror. We can't be defeated, and that is it. We're basically running around the village, uh, talking to people, uh, interacting with locations. So we are trying to, uh, because we uh, the day scenarios won't make a mulligan or, or may let you have a mulligan. So basically, we are doing the mulligan by playing the prelude. So we'll see how that goes. But without further delay, uh, let's get started. Okay, and we are ready to start, so, um, because I have the, in the tick of it, uh, I had to take one um, mental or physical, uh, two mental or physical trauma, or uh, one of both, so I decided to take one of both, and uh, with the experience I picked versatile, level two, uh, or yeah, versatile, so that is the upgrades. I did to the deck. I think I saved up the last experience, if I'm remembering correctly, so that I can get the chainsaws uh, faster. Okay, well, um, yeah, uh, nothing else to do but to start, so uh, we will read the act and agenda, so welcome to Hemlock Vale. The Miskatonic survey is staying in Hemlock Vale and making preparations to, for today's expedition. The more the locals trust you, the better you will understand the nature of Hemlock, Hemlock Isle. Forced when you draw a weakness, cancel its revelation effects and discard it. And Doom has threshold is 6. Uh, day, uh, dawn of the first day. The village brims with excitement. Children uh, play along the roadside wearing animal masks while others hang gaudy flowers on eaves and along fences. Investigators cannot take damage or, or be defeated. Objective, uh, befriend the locals and prepare for your first survey. Refer to the rules on page 6 for more information on preludes. Basically, yeah, uh, we'll keep the 
um, resources we gather up to five uh, we get have the cards up to our uh, starting hand size and we can have one asset in play that won't start in play usually uh, so for example I could try to find my sledgehammer and play it and that will start in, in play for the actual day scenario okay and uh, of course we keep all of the clues we gather so there are no, none clues except for here so if we get that one clue we have that at the start of the first scenario so we'll draw our opening hand one two three four five and we have well i'll replace the nihilism oh yeah uh, nihilism is my signature weakness so not that bad we have a couple of tinkers so um, i could play it on the lock picks that way i don't have a problem getting uh, if I get a double-handed item later, so that uh, the lockpick basically doesn't take up a hand slot. But I'm thinking I'm chugging the whole hand. Okay, uh, well, fine clothes is good for this interlude, so maybe I'll play that. So I'm I have to keep that hand. No weapon, as I said, I'm a bit worried about only having the one weapon, but yeah, I, I just want for this deck to work at some point. So, maybe we'll draw it, and uh, I think there's some ability here that we can fetch an uh, item asset from, from our deck, or top 10 cards of our deck, so I can try to fetch the uh, sledgehammer or something else from my deck by in interacting with the locations. Okay, well, <clears throat> first off, uh, first action, I'll play the fine clothes. Second action, I think I'll gain resources. Then um, I'll do the parlay here for the last action. Uh, you ask the locals about the veil and codex entry 10. So codex entry 10, the crossroads. Dozens of workers puzzle around the base of a large tree in the center of the crossroads. They, the many faces of the tree leer down at you with myriad expressions. Some laughing, others pinch in grief or terror. Its expression is grotesquely exaggerated. When you ask one of the nearby carpenters about the tree, they pause to consider their words. This tree is the effigy, a uh, likeness of. Well, uh, maybe it's best to think of it as a heavenly spirit, the same spirit that lives on in, on in each of us. The foreman tells you they will have to work through the night in anticipation of the rain tomorrow. As you watch them work, one carpenter trips and falls. Theo, Theo runs over from his truck and picks uh, her up as she clutches her eyes and laughs hysterically. You may uh, either draw one card or gain one resource. Search the set aside residence encounter set for Theo Peters and put him into play at the crossroads as a side face up. I decide to take a card. And it is, it is the sledgehammer, so we'll play that next next round. Okay. And Theo Peters. And uh, I'll just mark that Theo is in play in the crossroads, like this. So, Theo Peters, uh, choose and discard X cards from your hand. X is the current day number, parlay, and it is the uh, codex entry 8. So we'll do that definitely next round. <coughs> so that is the first round. Uh, no enemies, of course. Upkeep, we draw a card. And we discard, because uh, as we are playing the prelude, we discard the hasty repairs. And we gain a resource. 
So that is the first round. Let's go to the next round. Okay, this round uh, will and a doom, no encounter deck to draw. So we'll just uh, play down the sledgehammer. We are going to keep the sledgehammer, not the fine clothes in play for the day scenario. And we will um, parlay with Theo Peters, of course. I can choose the card that I'll discard, so I'll discard one perception. And we read um, Codex Entry 8. Can I get it into view with my camera setup? No, not, not very good, but... Okay, uh, Theo Peters, hold on, hold on, Theo says to the worker, pressing a cold cloth to her forehead. After another paint laugh, she passes out. You ask Theo what happened. It's kind of like heat stroke, except more like uh, you sort of work yourself in the good mood, then it is, well, uh, he sighs, I don't really know what it is. Something, sometimes people just get sick. Several locals carry the worker away to a nearby shed. After some pan banter, you ask Theo about any good areas to survey local wildlife on Hemlock Isle. He smiles broadly. My sister and I saw the biggest horseshoe crab on Aquan shoreline. I don't know if it is still there, but I swear it was the size of a buggy. I have some <coughs> family business in Aquan. If you wanna tag along today, you may immediately move to any location. Increase Theo Peter's relationship level. So we will add one uh, check mark to Theo Peters, and uh, we can move anywhere. <coughs> well. Uh, as I got my sledgehammer, I think I'll go to the boarding house. So that is a free action or free move. Oh yeah, I uh, have to do the parlay action, of course. Then uh, for my last asking, I'll do this. You ask around about the veil and codex nine. There is also an action to heal one damage or one horror limit once per game, but we don't have it. Well, actually I have, but I won't do it. And it is the Codex Entry 9, the boarding house. Uh, blossoming garlands hang from every cave of the boarding house. A, a succulent smell wafts out of the front door. Meat pies and beer brewing. The proprietor introduces herself as Miss Olmsted and offers you a room. I keep my eye on happenings around town. If you want to know what folks get up to in the Vale, I'm happy to help. When you ask about the beer, she waves one hand dismissively. Don't bother reporting me to the prohibitionists. We keep our own rules on Hemlock Isle, she tells you, then gives a sidelong look to the porch. That is unless someone gets their way. Uh, you look into the porch to see a gorgeous figure with, the, with skin the color of amber. Uh, they wear a trendy dress with white gold veil cloak tossed casually over their shoulders as they embroider a floral pattern on a round frame. Bertie sheepishly questions them, holding up a few photographs and sketches of the sample that drew you here. You may either draw on card or gain one resource. So the set aside residence encounter set for River Hawthorne and put them into play at the boarding house as set side face up. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, again I'll take a card because we have enough resources and uh, we search for River uh, Hawthorne. So river is in play there. So let's look at river. So uh, while you control river half a turn, you get plus one uh, willpower. Parlay, test either willpower or book three. If you succeed, 
uh, codex 5. So we will be pulling river next round. So that is our turn. We draw a card, cleaning kit, and we gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. Uh, we add another doom, uh, three of six. And no encounter card. So first action will parlay with river. And I'm using my book and uh, I'll just commit the cleaning kit for this test. Uh, we have the fine clothes, so we are testing uh, uh, three, four against one. And the first test, minus four. We fail. Well, we'll try again. And I'm committing perception this time. Five versus one. Skull is X is the current day number, so minus one. We succeed, we draw a card out of the perception, we get a tinker, which is great. And uh, we get to read uh, Codex Entry 5. So we read River Half Torn. I'm friends with the great profile. You may know him as John Barrymore. We met at the piazza in Rome, utter serendipity. Uh, River bubbles as they chat with Bertie. Although my last name is Hawthorne, I'll have you know I'm a hemlock, true and true. The last heir to the hemlock fortune. That is, if sweet William, William actually listens, they say so sorely. Bertie feels several more questions about current goings on in the New York's high society, of which he knows nothing. Before asking a river about uh, pointing, uh, points of interest, I, I hear not point mines has some fascinating crystals, they answer. Gain three resources. Increase river half torn relationship level by one. Okay, so we add one and we get three resources, which we really don't need at this point. Okay, and uh, last action. Mm, I'm actually not sure where I would want to go. Okay, so the crossroads has uh, uh, fast trigger ability. If there are exactly one or two investigators in the game during your turn, move to a connecting location group link once per round. So we can actually zoom through there uh, somewhere useful. So um, hmm. Where do I want to go? I'm not quite sure actually. Well, um, I think we'll go to touch general store for this one. So uh, we'll use our last action to move. We'll do the free move here. So next round we can parlay here. Okay, and we draw a card. We get prepared for the worst and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Mm, we add another doom. No encounter card. First action, uh, we'll do the parlor here. So, codex entry 14. So, 
So we read touch general store. The rustic general store also doubles as a pharmacy. A balding middle-aged man with banged arm stands behind the counter and introduces himself as Tad. We're so happy to have uh, visitors in the Vale. I know Mother Rachel is just off her rocks, rocker with excitement to see fresh new faces. And it's good business too. I'll give you a newcomer discount today if you're buying anything. It comes without saying, but you're all invited to the community meal this evening. You may spend one resort to set your deck for an item card and play it, ignoring its cost. Any investigator who has not resolved this effect may trigger this codex again. Search the set aside residence encounter set for Judith Park and put her into play at Tad's general store as a side face up. Uh, we get Judith Park and I think I won't need... Well, um, we could play... Could we play the other cleaning kit, maybe? It doesn't do anything, but if we get um, acetate in the first scenario, we have something to discard instead. Well, yeah, we don't need it because we already, we can't have them in play, so I'm not doing that at all. Okay, well, we have a uh, Judith Park here. So Judith Park. Mm. While you control Judith Park, you may take an additional action during your turn, which can be used to fight. Spend Axe resources, where Axe is the current day number, Pale 7. So I have plenty of resources, so I'm just doing it immediately. So I'm using one resource to Pale with Judith Park. Uh -uh. And it was Codex 7. You approach a combat woman in a handsome hunting jacket who eyes you like a hawk. You introduce yourself and the survey and she flicks ash from the tip of her cigar. Name's Judith. Judith Park. I'm the muscle around here, which mostly means shooting rowdy animals. They look all nice and friendly during the day, but they get weird at night. Some of them have started to look a little strange too. Occasionally one will wander into the village and I have to introduce them to old Jomo. She brandishes a hunting rifle almost as long as she is tall. Impressed, you ask if she's available for hire. The young woman sizes you up. Your friend Sint Marcus hired me to escort her to Eastwick Bog today. Be prepared if you come along. You may play a weapon card from your hand, ignoring its cost. Increased Judith Park's relationship level. Uh, well, <clears throat> yeah. I think I'll... Uh, because Judith lets me do combat, so I'll try to befriend Judith Park. So I think we're going to follow on that expedition. But yeah, uh, last action. We still have uh, next round time to do stuff. So, I think for my last section I'll move to the commons and next round do a parlay there. And that is my turn. We draw a card, nihilism, we discard it and we gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. Now we had a doom, so this will be the last round we have time to do stuff. We, um, yeah. We will do the parlay here. You inspect the communal hall and check out the local delivery service. So, Codex Entry 16. Uh, welcome to the Vale, a young woman with a bob cut greets you as you enter through the double barn doors. It's been a long since we've had visitors. One thing you gotta know about the Vale is that we do most everything in the commons. I know Sister Leah uh, is planning a community dance tomorrow evening. 
Hey Gideon, no smoking inside, the woman barks at an old man in a long blue sailor coat in the corner. He stands up and hobbles outside, crumbling. You notice the corkboard on the back wall is pinned with children's drawings of plants and birds with extra teeth, eyes and limbs. The woman breaks your focus. Uh, you, if you ever want to call you for anyone back on the mainland or, you know, send a gift to a special someone in the village, I'm your girl. You can call me Marta Jean. So set up nine cards of your deck for an ally card and add it to your hand, shuffle your deck. So to set aside resident and resident encounter set for Gideon Misra and put him into play in the commons as a side face up. So uh, we'll search for the Venture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We get the Venture into our hand. Not playing him, but uh, it's good to have him in, in our opening hand for the scenario. So we have a buffer, buffer ally to play. Okay, then we get a uh, uh, Gideon. And Gideon comes into play here. So we can do the parlay, and that is the last thing we can do because it's a double action. So we'll do that. Uh, so we'll parlay with Gideon. And it is uh, codex entry number six. Uh, you're no good, Matjin, mumbles the old man. He regards you warily until you mention coming from Arkham. Might have been some 30 years back I sailed past a queer light beneath the Miskatonic River. The old sailor story quickly meanders into five other less interesting tales, but you listen till the end. Uh, when you ask about the local points of interest, he replies, Look out! You won't take five steps out of the veil before something bites you. Uh, draw three cards. Increase Gideon's mistrust relationship level. Okay, well, I think that's a good result. We got four um, people interviewed. So we draw three cards. One, two, three. Okay. So I think we can forge a pretty good uh, starting hand for the actual scenario with these, and we have the resources. So that is basically it. We'll uh, just finish up here. So we'll add uh, the six doom. Oh yeah, we draw one more card. We get one more resource, and uh, we uh, uh, advance. Time to get to work. Bertie approaches absolutely winded. Dr. Marquez requests your immediate presence, he huffs, putting into your conversation. And believe me, she will not like it if you're late at all. Each investigator resigns resolution 1. You meet Dr. Marquez and Bertie back at the crossroads. After you, you each shared some possible leads for their survey, the professor lays out the map of Hemlock Isle. I didn't expect the village to be so religious, says Dr. Marquez. Bertie lights up in, in response. They almost uh, seem to be living in some transcendentalist ideal. I have no idea what they actually believe, mind you, but they seem friendly enough. Friendly, a word of it, for it, <laughs> Dr. Marcus smiles grimly. We have a good three days before the island is overrun with tourists. I hate tourists. Uh, that sounds rather ill-natured given uh, uh, the celebration, Bertie Ventures. Dr. Marcus gives him a white, uh, withering look. What I mean is that they'll disturb, disrupt the local habitats so, you, so our time is limited. We can split up to cover more ground, or we can stick together. Theo has volunteered to drive us anywhere we need to go, and even said we could take his truck at night, though we aren't to tell Mother Rachel. Given the stories of deadly wildlife, I've hired Judith to accompany me to Eastwick Bog. Either of you are welcome to join. Just be back by sundown. 
I plan to take a walk to the Western Woods, Bertie says, alone, if you don't mind. If Mrs. Olmsted's descriptions are to be believed, they shall be quite stunning. You consider your option. Uh, make preparation for your first survey. Choose one asset in your play area to keep for the next scenario. It must be one that does not start in play. Discard each other asset and attach uh, attachment in your play area, except for those that start each game in play. Discard down to your opening hand size. Shuffle your discard pile into your deck. Your current hand is your opening hand for the next scenario. You will not draw a new opening hand or take a mulligan. Discard down to your starting resources. Exploring the isle is allegedly dangerous. Add one auto-failed token to the chaos pack for the remainder of the campaign. Set, when setting up the scenar next scenario, skip steps 1 to 8, setting up the game on page 27 of the rules reference. Uh, the investigators must choose where to survey today. You will have the opportunity to survey multiple areas over the course of the campaign. To the north, an abandoned north point mine lies empty and overrun with strange uh, wildlife. To, to brave the danger of writ written in rock, turn to page 10. To the south, the old hemlock house is said to be a host of strange infestation. To in investigate hemlock house, turn to page 14. The devastated pearl ridge up no northwest is covered in a persistent layer of white ash. To explore the silent heath, turn to page 19. Northeast is Aquan, a dwindling settlement of Abenaki and Mariners on, on the desolate coastline. To save the lost sister, turn to page 23. Dr. Marcus believes East Wickborg to the southeast may be the origin of the sample that drew you here. To discover the thing in the depths, turn to page 27. So I'm designing to go to the uh, thing in the depths. So I'll set up that and uh, we'll be right back after I have set up that and before that we'll do uh, our hand. So I'm just thinking of the cards I will pick. So we start with the game with five resources. I'll get rid of the fine clothes. I have the sledgehammer in play. I will probably have jury rig. I don't need that, I don't need that. Scene of the crime. I don't need that. Uh, it's a bit tricky. So these two will keep, I think we'll keep that. Yeah, we don't need two jury So we'll keep these and these, these will discard. So we have jury rig, scene of the crime, tinker, matchbox and venturer for our opening hand. Okay, so that is the preload. We'll see you in the thing in the depths. Okay, and we have set up the thing in the depths scenario. So uh, we have the starting location here. Then we have the north side, uh, what was it called? The North Shore, and then we have the Cranberry Bog. So these were placed into uh, play at random. Uh, we removed one and uh, they are double-sided, so that is why we are uh, having them revealed. And we have Judith Park in play here, and we are controlling Dr. Rosa Marquez. And she doesn't take up an ally slot, but I probably won't be playing my ally other way. So uh, we'll just read uh, agenda and act cards. Uh, sinking ground. Light tremors ripple through the floating landscape. The bog is, fe fecund, is a fecund jungle of bright flowers and glassy oily reflections. Action resign. You flee the bog. Forced, when you, your turn ends, if you are at the bog location, place one damage on your location as a sinkhole. Two sinkholes instead if there are one or more or two investigators in the game. So I'll place two. Uh, forced, if a location has three or more sinkholes on it, remove all sinkholes from it and flip it over. Okay. Then... Botanical survey. 
The bog is supposedly the origin of the sample that drew the markets to the island in the first place. You have your work cut out for you. Objective at the end of the round investigators at North Shore location may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. See the location placement diagram on page 28 of the campaign guide for the North Shore location. We need three clues, so that won't be that big of a problem. Okay, so just a reminder, uh, Wilson Richards uh, reduces the resource cost of the first tool asset you play each round by one, and you get plus one skill value during a skill test on a tool asset. And um, Elder Sign is zero, you may swap a tool asset in your play area with a tool asset in your hand with equal or lower printed cost. Okay, uh, we have our starting hand here. Uh, I'll think I will play down. Mm, yeah, I'll play down matchbox. It comes into play with three supplies. Oh yeah, we could use the Venturer to add supplies onto the matchbox too. Then I will play Jury Rig. We put um, three tokens on that and they are durability. And last action I will Investigate uh, three versus. I'll use one from my matchbox, so I'm four versus two here. And while you control Dr. Marcus, you get plus one intellect and uh, agility, so I'm actually five versus two here. And after you discover the last clue at your location, we can read the Codex entry for Dr. Marquez, so we'll probably do that now. So, uh, minus one, we'll get this clue and we'll read the codex entry immediately. So, Dr. Rosa Marquez. Take a look at, look at this, Dr. Marquez begins you to a stripped trunk. It's impossible. Five different species in one. I can't think of a gra crafting method that could produce something like this. She stabs the trunk with her cane, reaches down and pulls up a thick, many colored bundle of roots that look like an anger, an angel's hair. They're sturdy toe. Uh, their roots resemble the Mucalia network of a mushroom colony, but are much thicker. Stick uh, to the trees and you won't sink. Choose any location in play. If it is a bog location, remove all sinkholes from it. If it is a sunken location, flip it, may, may keeping all the tokens and attachments. Well, that didn't help us a bit. Okay, and then we'll go to upkeep. We draw one card. We get ad hoc and we get a resource. And uh, we put two damage onto a location. A sinkhole. And that is that round. Let's go to the next round. I forgot to <laughs> remove the doom last uh, from the preload, so we'll add the first doom there. And uh, we draw the first encounter guy, uh, card. And it is uh, Enervation. Uh, test uh, Combat 5. Reduce the difficulty of this test by 1 for each damage on you. So it's a test of 4. If you fail, you must either take 2 damage or choose the card with the highest printed cost in your hand and discard it. I'm happy to discard the Venture. I honestly don't need that. So I'm just testing uh, 3 versus 4. Uh, minus one, so I'll discard the venture. And that is that. Okay, we'll uh, probably will want these victory point locations cleared. So, um, let me think how do we want to proceed. So, we want to get these three 
locations cleared. I could go here. And uh, hopefully we get an enemy, so I could see enough to crime it. But I, I could go here, investigate and move here. <coughs> and that is my turn. Okay. So we'll do that. So first move here. And... Uh, after you reveal a token with a symbol while investigating covered bridge, draw the top card of the encounter deck. So we could actually get an enemy here with that. Do we want to play the ad hook? Mm. Yeah, we probably will be just committing that. So I'm, I'm using the matchbox and uh, committing that to get this clue here. So we are uh, four, five, six uh, versus three plus one and uh, we get the clue. And uh, last action we'll move to Muddy Fen. And that is our turn. Oh yeah, I think I should have shuffled my discard. Okay, I forgot to do that. So I have only discarded these two cards. So I'm shuffling <laughs> my hand. Um, yeah, first time uh, playing, playing uh, these back to back. So I might do some silly mistake like this because I'm, I basically just set up the other scenario after the preload. So yeah, okay, that's enough shuffling. Uh, we'll go to upkeep, we draw, prepare for the worst and gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. Uh, two, oh yeah, uh, we had to add two sinkholes here. And then counter card is unnatural growth. Place one doom on the nearest enemy with no doom on it. If no doom was placed uh, by this, discard two cards at random from your hand. Well, that sucks. No enemies in play. We would have wanted an enemy here. So two cards at random are <laughs> the cards I wanted to have. Okay, sort this. Uh, yeah, I will just uh, investigate. I'm using the map box. That means I uh, the the rest of the round I investigate better at this location. So first action, I'll commit the prepared for the worst. Uh, we are uh, three, four, five versus three minus one. So at least we have the requisite number of clues, which is three. I'll try to clear this. So four versus three. It's another plus one. So we got really lucky. I'll move to the rotten dock. And that is our turn, no enemies, we'll go to upkeep, we draw Vicious Blow and gain a resource. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. We add Doom, so the agenda advances. Uh, a near miss. An ear-splitting roar resounds through the bog, followed by a several ripples that roll through the floating landscape. You feel a low tremble below you and dive to safety just before a horrible monstrosity erupts from below. Rows of thin, needle-sharp teeth gnash at the air where you just were, and ghastly stalks on ice turn to regard you with hunger. Flip the center location to its sunken side, discarding all tokens and Place and player cards attachments spawn to set us up the thing in the depths enemy at it. Okay, well that's interesting. So five shroud and no clues forced after you move into this location, draw the top card of the encounter deck. 
and uh, victory one. And the thing in the depths, I'll use a token to represent where where it is. We'll look at it in a moment. The thing in the bog, the bog rocks with towering waves. Force when your turn ends. If you are at the bog location, place one damage on your location as a single two. Instead, if there are one or two investigators in the game, force if a location has three or more sinkholes on it, remove all sinkholes from it and flip it over. Objective if the thing in the depths is defeated, resolution four. So that uh, we we can uh, kill, uh, end the scenario by defeating this guy, uh, which won't be easy. As you can see, 4 fight, 10 health, uh, plus 5 health uh, per investigator, so it has 15 health and cannot make attacks of opportunity. Okay, so uh, 2 evade, so we could try to evade it. Uh, Abomination, Flora, Mutated, Elite. The thing in the depths is move. Well, while the thing in the depths is moving, its location is considered to be connected to its sunken location. Forced after the thing in the depths attacks a bog location, uh, heal two damage from it. Okay. Okay. And it is Elusive Hunter Massive Retaliate. Yeah, I forgot to read those. Uh, it's, it's a <laughs> bit uh, weird. While the thing in the depths is moving, its location is considered to be connected to its sunken location. Okay. Oh yeah, it's hunting through the sunken locations. Otherwise we have this like left to right, up, up or down. Okay, then we draw the encounter card for this round. Call of the Wild, test agility tree. If you fail, choose the nearest enemy. That enemy attacks you. If you failed and uh, no enemy was chosen, take two damage instead. Okay. Uh, that sucks. Uh, I'm testing four versus three. Minus one, we succeed. So luckily we do dodged that attack with that success. Okay, mm, I think our plan is to go up here, uh, parlay, and uh, that is our plan for this round. Oh yeah, this matchbox is discarded because it's empty. First action, we'll move up here. Second action, we'll spend resources, uh, one resource to parlay, and we read resolution 7. Uh, let's see, Judith Park. Uh, Judith grabs to the, on to a tree branch to steady herself. This whole bog is sinking. It wasn't always uh, be this bad. Uh, feels like something shifted down in the depths. Something big. I guess we should stick together, you know, so I can protect you. She fla flashes and sm a smile. Take control of Judith Park. Okay, and Judith doesn't take up an ally slot, and now uh, while you control Judith Park, you may take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used to fight, uh, which actually means we can s uh, swing the sledgehammer twice, so we could actually try to uh, fight this guy. Uh, of course, um, uh, we are fighting with uh, four, five, six, and the juridic seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, seven, eight, uh, eight versus four. So, yeah, and we deal three damage for each swing. So that that could all actually. We need four, uh, five hits, uh, four four, uh, uh, successes with the double action swing plus committing the vicious blow. Okay, uh, I might to just try that out. Uh, it is victory two, so that uh, sounds like a decent plan, I think. 
we might still want to clear this before we go fight that, but we'll see. Okay, uh, that was our first. So... Yeah, the botanist survey... Uh, at the end of the round, investigate the North Shore location may spend. Uh, we'll see uh, if we want to do that, but we'll try to investigate here. This is a, a low shroud, so we'll just try to get this clue. So, investigating 4 versus 2. Uh, minus 2, we'll grab the clue. And last action, I'm actually drawing a card over power, that's good. And enemy face, uh, this guy hunts over here. Upkeep. Uh, we'll put two damage here. Uh, we draw a card. Matchbox, okay. And a resource. And at the end of the round, we'll spend the requisite number of clues, which is three. And advance. The wise mound. You come. Uh, to the to a round steel pond uh, on the northeastern shore of the bog. Atop a mound of wildflowers is a silvery uh, alkaloid blossom, very much like the sample that drew Dr. Marquez to Hemlock Isle. When you approach, the blossom swells to release a cloud of spores, then closes. The scent of the spores is pleasant, almost like cloves, but grows bitter the longer it lingers. Suddenly the mound of flowers moves, a large reptilian head rises out of the water and looks at you with the intelligence eyes before swi swiftly swimming away. Spawn the Cetotide uh, Celudron hybrid enemy at the North Shore location. Choose a location adjacent to Celudron hybrid's location and spawn one of the set-aside grasping tendrils enemies at that location. Shuffle each other set-aside grasping tendril enemy into the enemy deck along with the discard pile. Discovery of a lifetime. Uh, the large flowering a turtle-like creature is one of the on the move. Perhaps you can herd it to safety. Action investigators at a sinkhole location adjacent to the Litrian hybrid location spends one clue as a group uh, for the remainder of the round. Change the Litrian hybrid's patrol location to that location. Forced at the end of the enemy phase, the Litrian hybrid takes one damage for each ready abomination enemy at its location. Object it at the end of the round. If the Celitrian hybrid is at the starting location, immediately advance. So either we'll kill that or we'll get the um, Celitrian hybrid safety. Oh, it's a cute turtle. So, it is aloof, elusive patrol nearest empty location. Celitrian hybrid cannot move if a ready abomination enemy is at its location or if it is engaged with an investigator. If this enemy is defeated, resolution 3. So, we don't want to kill this. I'm actually marking it with elder signs because it's a nice guy. Okay. Then we get one of these grasping tendrils and I'll place it over... It's over here. Uh, let's have a look. So... Uh, it is... Uh, 2 fight, X health and 4 evade, X is the current day number, so it only has 1 health. Spawn, Celitrian hybrid location, but we had to spawn it uh, on a connecting location. At the north side location, choose a location adjacent to a general location. Spawn one of the set-aside grasping tendril enemies location. Shuffle each other set-aside... Okay. Along with the discard pile. Yeah. So we have four more grasping tendrils. Uh, 
Uh, lot to set up here, so I think that is that round. I'll set up stuff and we'll see on the next round. We add another Doom. And counter card for this round is... Sinking Sludge. If you are at a sunken location, take one direct damage and deal one direct damage to its ally asset you control. Book location, place one damage on your location as a sinkhole. So we put one damage here as a sinkhole, which will mean, I think, that it immediately sinks. If a location has three or more sinkholes on it, remove all sinkholes from it and flip it over. Okay. And we can actually remove these because we control uh, Judith Park. I think we didn't use one of our actions, or uh, we might have drawn a card. Okay, uh, that was the Mythos phase. So we'll just want to uh, move, move. And uh, guide this guy over here. So this one have uh, uh, hunter. Yeah, no. So we can just ignore that enemy. Okay. Uh, for our turn is move, move. And we'll spend one clue. I think that's a fast action. Yeah, investigators at the single location. Adjacent. A single location. Adjacent. Okay, I, I spent the clue here. So this will patrol here now. We can actually. Uh, yeah. I remember. Then I'll move here. And. Uh, Last action, I will play match box down. Because I want to get this close next round. Mm, tokens are a mess here. Okay. Then, enemy phase. This guy moves here. Uh, we'll just move it this here. And upkeep. Venture. Again, a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. Uh, the Doom Threshold is by the way 10, so we have plenty of time to get this done. Encounter card is Swarm. Test Agility 3 for each point you fail by. You must either lose one resource or take one damage. Well, we have plenty of resources to lose. And uh, uh, Testing 4 versus 3. Minus 1. No worries. Uh, we'll uh, use our clue to make this guy move here. Uh, we'll move here ourselves. We'll use the matchbox and we'll start investigating here. And I am... Uh, yeah, it is uh, four versus three, which is not that good. Uh, we'll go five versus three. Skull, and it is still half the number of sunken locations in play rounded up, so it is minus one. So we'll get the cl uh, clue here. And uh, last action, we'll draw a card. No, no, uh, we'll try to investigate. Uh, we are four versus three. Minus one. 
we'll get, get that glued to enemy face, this uh, patrols here, and uh, this hunts here, upkeep, we draw, jury rig, and gain a resource. And that is that round, let's go to the next round. We add a doom, and count the card is. Another swarm, okay, uh, four versus three. Not committing anything, I have plenty of uh, health left. Uh, minus one, we pass, so nothing happens. Those were two lucky draws. So I'm immediately using this to make this go here. And uh, we can actually move in here and try to kill it. Just checking uh, when do we advance if at the end of the round if the Salutrian Hybrid is the starting regime. Okay, now. Uh, yep, um, I'll just. I, I think we can kill the big enemy and uh, get this to safety. I will rather get that to safety than try to kill that. Uh, we need to hit it for five times, which is two turns, which is the time that this goes here, so it, there's no point in trying. Uh, uh, we probably needed to add sinkholes here last round. and. Uh, we don't want to end up there. Okay, so I'm just moving, moving, move, uh, and uh, waiting there. So this is forced to move here. Next round, it moves to the empty location. So uh, we can choose. So it will go there. Or we can move here, so it, it's forced to move, because this can... Oh no, no, this hunts here. So we can one, two, three... Yeah, okay. And... Uh, so we move, move. And draw a car, okay. I think that's our turn. Enemy face, this guy moves here. This guy moves over here. Upkeep that and a resource so this is a fast turn so that is that round let's go to the next round uh, probably the last round of the game uh, we add a doom we draw encounter card grasping tendrils search aloof ah it is knight aloof so it is engaged with us so it searches into <laughs> Go Leal stack, so we have to fight this round. I think I'm just gonna kill this one, and maybe this will just hit me for one damage. So, finally we get to fight, so first action I will double swing with the sledgehammer. I am committing the vicious blow to the test, so we get uh, four, five, six, seven versus three. It is um, minus three, so we deal four damage. That's nice. And then, uh, we could just single hit it, which I'll do. So I'll single hit, I'll commit the overpower to the test. So we are uh, four. Uh, three, because this is a minus one. Three, four, five versus three. I'll go six versus three. No, I'll commit one up here. So, 7 versus 3, yeah, we'll defeat this old 
Tänk ska lära oss dig. Och jag ändå skulle ha att du sin kall så nitt. And we have an extra action to uh, fight with Judith Park, so we are just fighting this. This enemy it only has one health and two combat. We'll commit these two cards. So we are hitting uh, and we'll use one from here. We are hitting a three, four, five, six, seven versus two. Elder sign. I'm not gonna use the ability, but we'll hit and kill it off. Last action, we'll move up here. So this guy has to hunt here, and this can move here. So enemy face. This moves here. This hunts here. And uh, upkeep. We we'll draw one card. Nihilism, <laughs> and we gain a resource. And. Uh, then, at the end of the round, if the Lytrian hybrid is at the starting location, he immediately advance. Strange anatomy. You're, you corner the reptilian creature in a shining pool where it sinks, sinks into the mud, clearly exhausted. As it starts munching on a tangle of flowers, you take... Um, uh, several sketches and notes of the thing's sprouting shell. The acaloid blossom of on its back seems to pulse, producing a pair of shears you prepare to take a, a sample. If it is day one, read the following, otherwise resolution one. Stop! Dr. Marcus shouts. The, that flower is paras parasitic. It is now part of the creature's anatomy. There's no telling how deeply it's embedded. She points to the flower's thick, translucent stem. Vicious white fluid pumps through it like an artery. If the flower dies, its host dies too. Resolution 2. Resolution 2. A gun clicks behind you. Hold back, Judith says, emerging from the undergrowth. She takes aim at the reptilian hybrid. Keep clear of that thing. Dr. Marquez steps between Judith and the creature. Uh, with all due respect, that thing is completely harmless. As if, it, as if to underscore her point, the creature chews a flowering branch. No, nothing on this island is harmless, Judith retorts. Everything's even the sweetest sweet turtle and the cute deer and the damn rabbits are deadly. I don't know why the villagers aren't more afraid. I can gar guarantee you this turtle, this doesn't just munch flowers. If you shoot the, the thing I came here to survey, you will not be paid, Dr. Marcus said coldly. The professor pulls out a notebook and begins sketching the creature. A hush falls over the group as a pair of Frogs swim across the pond in front of the creature. In an instant, the Celidrian hybrid opens its mouth and exposes four separate rows of teeth lining uh, the back of its throat, then snaps up both frogs. Dr. Marcus puts down her sketchbook. What in the hell? In your campaign log, record the Cy Celidrian hybrid lived. Each investigator earns three bonus experience as they witness a part of the Eastwick box unique flora and fauna. Skip to resolution 5. Um, there. Resolution 5. Miskatonic survey. June 1926. Members Marcus Musgrave at Ali. Uh, area surveyed. East with bog. Numerous, numerous abnormally sized flora. Parasitic vari variety capable of controlling its host. Oppressively abundant ecosystem. Aggressive water life. More jungle than forest. Not your average bog. We'll need to return with more funding. Update your campaign log. If, the, if River asked for help and an investigator controlled River Hawthorne when they were defeated or, or the scenario ended, decreased River Hawthorne's relationship level. Uh, if Judith Park's no, in Judith Park's notes, 
If Judith shared a crotch and the thing in the depths is in the victory display, uh, increase Judith's part relationship level. Each investigator earns one bonus experience. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. Each investigator may now spend the exper experience recorded under unspent experience in your campaign log. So we had one, two, three experience here, three from the saving the creature and one bonus experience from the in, uh, intro of this scenario. So we have seven experience to spend for next round and we have said one, so we have eight, which means I have just enough to change the sledgehammers into chainsaws, which is great. So we'll do that, but yeah. That was the thing in the depths, and next time we will be heading into the uh, wait a second. I think it's the first evening we'll play next. Yeah, we'll go to the prelude the first evening, which I will just read and tell what happened, and uh, we'll play the first night scenario after that. So hope you guys like this playthrough. Thanks for watching and until next time.